Hey, welcome back to another part of the creating crystal glasses in Blender series. While thinking about content related to the series, which would be good for shorts, I stumbled upon a few concepts while trying to create an orange juice. And I thought to myself, yeah, that these concepts are pretty important when working with liquids that are not very clear, like juice or milk. So let's dive into these juicy and milky liquids and let me show you a few things I discovered while trying to recreating them. So for the start, I took the long drink glass with the liquid we had in the previous video, added a straw to it and I have a basic product shooting setup here. In the background you can see a cyclorama, that's what it's called when you want to create isolated product photos. There is no HDRI or anything else in my word light and for the lighting I did a classical three point light setup. Let me show you real quick. I have a key light which just highlights the glass. Then I have a fill light which adds some softness from the other side filling up the scene with some light. And as a third one I added a rim light to the background which is just there to make the profile of the glass visible and just to have some backlighting to it which only is there to highlighting the profile of everything in the scene. So very basic scene with the object from the last tutorial and let's dive right in into creating juice. So as you might know, orange juice is not that very transparent liquid. So we need a different shader approach. We can't reuse our glass shader here and we need to do something different. And what we are going to do to emulate juices or milky liquids, we are emulating two physical concepts. Or once the Tyndall effect and Beer Lambert's law. The Tyndall effect explains how light gathers when it hits a particle in a juice and it gives this glowing appearance. And on the other side we have Beer Lambert's law which tells us more about light absorption. Because the deeper the light goes into juice, the more the light gets absorbed, making the juice look darker and having this richer flavorful taste to it. So we need to emulate these two principles and I show you how. For now I'm gonna hide the glass and I'm gonna hide the straw. I'm removing everything we had in the shader for because we not, don't need this anymore. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm adding a subsurface scattering shader. Removing the mix shader. So what does subsurface scattering do? It means that light enters our solid from one side and then within the, within the body it starts to scatter around with the, with the particles it hits and it just exits anywhere. So with every light ray that goes in there, it scatters around and just exits anywhere else. And we need this to emulate Beer Lambert's law. What are these values about? First thing what we need to do is to change the radius and the scale. The scale tells us how deep the light goes into the liquid before it exits out again. And besides the scale, we have also these radius values. These are for R, G and B. And the values which are default here are set for human skin. Because human skin is made of different organic materials and red, green and blue scatter differently through human skin. But for our case, we need to set everything to one because I want every color scatter at the same radius. And instead of setting specific values to recreate an orange scattering, I just set everything to one and set the color to a very rich orange. So what you can see right now, light enters, scatters through it. And when we have very thin edges, we get this, this shine through effect as you can see at the border. So white light goes in, scatters around, gets this orange color we set here. And the scale determines how far it goes in there before it scatters out again. So the higher I set it, the less intense our orange color gets because it gets absorbed right in there. For our use case, I think 0 0.4 is a good value. For IOR, I'm using 1.3 because 1.3 is very close to water. We are still working with liquids. And anisotropy is a value that determines how random our scattering is. With an anisotropy value of 1, the scattering goes along the direction of our light source. So with a value of one, the scattering should go like more like this straight along the light source. And with an anisotropy value of zero, the scattering goes more like this before it exits anywhere else. Besides subsurface scattering, we also need translucency. And just let me show you what happens with only translucency. So subsurface scattering is about light bouncing around within a body and translucency is about lighting passing through a thin object and light coming out of the other side. So when I hide my light sources, 
you can see that light shines through and you get this effect of glass shining through leaves or very thin slices of anything organic. So I want to combine these two, but I don't want white translucency. I also want orange translucency. So I just copy the color of my subsurface scattering, adding it here. And I want the translucency to be a bit brighter than my subsurface scattering. When you have Node Wrangler enabled and you select these two nodes and press Ctrl zero, it will put them into a mix node. And while testing this setup, I figured out having about 80% of subsurface scattering and about 20% of translucency gives us this look, which is already pretty close to orange juice. So now we have scattering, we have translucency, and what we also need is some absorption. Because the deeper the light goes into the juice, the more it gets absorbed, and which makes it look a bit richer, the thicker it is. And for that, we have volume absorption. The volume absorption goes into the volume of our material output. And I'm taking the color of my subsurface scattering again, setting it to the volume absorption, and increasing the density to 3. Because the higher the density, the more it will absorb the light. So what our juice is doing right now, it's absorbing light, it scatters light, and it also lets light shine through to the other side. Currently, it looks more like wax or some kind of moldable material like plastic. So we need to add some glossiness to it. To do that, I select my mix shader, press Ctrl-0 to add another mix shader to it. And I'm just adding a glossy BSDF. Plugging it in right here with a very low roughness. Let's see, 0 0.1 could work, maybe even lower, 0 0.05. This looks about right. And I don't want this glossiness everywhere. So for the mix input, I'm using a Fresnel shader. Make sure that the IOR value of the Fresnel shader is the same as the IOR you used for your liquid. So I'm putting it to 1.3. And what the Fresnel shader does is it creates a view dependent mask. When I look at my juice, I want more reflections at the bright white areas and less reflections at the black areas. So when I use this as a mix here, we should get not much reflection here and a lot of reflection here, but there's something off with it. In the previous tutorial, I told you to invert your normals of your liquid to make the refraction look proper. In this case, we don't want it recalculate the normals again. And this looks much better because Fresnel calculation doesn't work properly with inverted normals. So having this ready, we're checking it and we are having light reflections as you can see here. And now it kind of looks like orange juice. So let's add our glass back in. And I thought to myself, yeah, this is cool, but something is missing. Checked some images online from marketing material for orange juice. And I noticed many of them add ice to it. So let's quickly make some ice cubes. What I do, I'm adding a cube. Scaling it down as 0 0.1, scaling it down further, 0 0.5. And I think this is the right size for an ice cube. Control A, apply the scale. For an ice cube, we want some kind of randomized shape. So I'm adding a bevel modifier. The value is too high for our small size. Let's see if 0 0.01 will work well. Yeah, we don't need shaded view for this. And by pressing Control 1, I'm adding a subdivision surface modifier. Set the ice cube to shade smooth. And when changing the value of your bevel, you get a more roundish, a more cubic, or maybe even a more pyramidic look. I think this is fine, but it needs some displacement, some randomness to it. I'm adding a displace modifier, which gives us this. It's not what we want. Adding a new texture. I think clouds will work just fine, but I'm decreasing the strength a bit. <laughs> not just a bit, I'm decreasing the strength by a lot. And what I'm also going to do in the coordinates, I don't select local, I select global, because when I move the ice cube now, you can see how the shape shifts. It's not very noticeable right now, because you might need to change a few parameters in the texture setting. So if you go down with the size, we should get a more random cube. And when I move this one around, I get randomized cubes, which is great because when I put it in the glass, ah, it's still a bit too big. Let's shrink it a bit down. Rotate it a bit around randomly. I have these parameters here to adjust the shape and the size of the cube, which is pretty cool. So we have one setup to create many random cubes. When I duplicate a cube, it's just shaped a bit differently. And we always want variation with stuff like this. So this is the basic setup to create some ice cubes. And now we need a shader for the ice cube. The ice cube again is similar to glass and has some mixed properties of these transparent glass properties and some translucent properties. It always depends on how the surface of the cube looks, how many bubbles are in there. And to do that, I'm adding a new shader. 
And first thing I'm gonna do is I'm adding a refraction BSDF, putting it to the surface. So I just get only refraction, setting the IOR to 1.3 again, because ice cubes are made of water. And what I'm also gonna do, I'm adding a translucent BSDF to have this shine through effect. I'm mixing these two. And as a mix input, I'm gonna use the Fresnel shading again with a value of 1.3. And this will give me a promising looking ice cube, which refracts at the center and has some translucency at the edges. And there's one more thing I want to add. Usually ice cubes aren't that, that smooth at the surface. So let's add some noise and a bump note. And when I put this noise factor into the bump, and put this into the normal, we will get some bumpy and more liquidy looking effects on the surface. I think the effect is too strong for the ice cube, so I'm setting the scale down to one. I think I want to have a bit more detail. It's too strong, so I'm going with strength of 0 0.1, so we just have these slight irregularities when light goes through the ice cube. And there is one more thing I noticed about ice cubes. Many times they have this air bubble inside of them, and we can do that too by going into edit mode of our ice cube pressing shift d scaling it down and suddenly we have a liquid bubble in our ice cube and when we go back into object mode with our displacement it displaces too what you see many times is that inside you have a different bump so i'm adding a new material setting this to material free the same as our outside Going into edit mode, we still have the inside selected, pressing assign back in object mode and creating a new user for so this becomes material 4 and I'm increasing the scale to 5 or maybe even higher to 10. And now the inside has more bump than the outside, which adds to the realism of the ice cubes. So next we only have to put this into the glass and make two more copies of it, rotating them a bit around, just make sure that they look a bit more random, so decreasing the size, increasing the size, rotating them a bit around, play around with the modifiers, if you increase the beveling they get a bit rounder, just do it as, as you like it, and we have ice cubes in the glass, which is pretty great, right? So in my preview you saw that I also had not just ice cubes on top of the glass, I also had ice cubes within the glass and this took me a few minutes to figure it out but I'm telling you how I did it. So my initial thought was that we have this translucent material. If I just press shift D, move it down, it should be visible, right? But as you can see, no, it's not visible. Even if I move it very close to the edge, it's not visible. So what did I do next to make this work? I thought to myself, what makes this different from a real glass of orange juice with ice cubes? And I had this idea in my mind where I said to myself, in a real glass, you don't have the liquid and the ice cube at the same place. So let's try something. I'm moving this out right now. I'm removing the inside geometry because I don't need this anymore. And I have this ice cube, moving it back inside. It's named cube 003. And what I did is I added a boolean modifier and set the solver to fast and just selected cube free for testing purposes and suddenly as you can see it the ice cube appeared. So by cutting a hole into my liquid I made the cubes inside the liquid visible which was pretty great. I was amazed that this is working and here are a few tips what you should do what you shouldn't do keep this inside the liquid. Don't move it to the edge because this will create shading issues later. Keep it inside the liquid. And when you keep this inside the liquid, you can add as many as you want. Adding another one here, get to your liquid, just duplicate the boolean modifier and select the next cube. You see ice cube is added. Adding one more up here, go back to the liquid, adding a boolean modifier, just duplicating this one. And here, selecting the next cube, and you get these spots in here. The closer these spots are to the edge, the darker they get. And when I rendered it out the first time, I thought to myself, yeah, you kinda can see the cubes. It's okay, but real cubes don't 
work that way. They have either a white or some milky look to it. So I thought again, okay, what can I do to make this more look like an ice cube? And then it hit me because when you boolean cut something, the material properties will be transferred to the new surface. So I'm going into material of these cutting objects, removing them, adding a new material. I thought to myself, instead of having a principle, what happens when I just add an emission of one to it? And suddenly this looks much more like an ice cube within a liquid. So I have this new material now. I did the same with every ice cube I had and suddenly I made the ice cubes visible. I recommend leaving the strength at one because when you increase it, the scattering starts again and this is not great. So now just add more of these ice cubes into your liquid, cut them into the liquid and just be aware of that you don't cut the surface. I did the same with the straw, made a copy of the straw Remove the solidify modifier I had there previously. So I have to copy of my straw. I'm making sure that the top is closed. Also that the bottom is closed. Always a good idea to use manifold objects for boolean operations. Making everything back visible again. Moving it back down. Hiding this one for now. And let's just add another duplicate. And in the new boolean modifier we select the cylinder. And I really advise you to make sure that it's only within your liquid and doesn't stick out to prevent any shading issues. And now the straw is visible too from the inside when you shine light through it and render it. There's one more thing I did to make it look cool and fresh. I added water drops to the glass. I'm going to show you quickly how I did this. I go into my glass, select the bottom, press Ctrl plus 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 till I have everything selected and in my material menu I'm creating new material slot and selecting the same material as the glass already has press assign in the object modes I make it a single user copy and in this single user copy I add a Voronoi texture so let's see what Voronoi texture does and I just put it to the output with Control shift click and it looks like this so we are doing a few adjustments to the Voronoi texture I need a higher scale instead of f1 I'm using smooth f1 and these are the drops you saw in the render to highlight these drops a bit more I'm adding a color ramp flip the color ramp moving the black very close and these are the water drops we have on our glass so we can just use this, put it into a bump node, into the height of our bump node, not into the normal, setting the strength to a more subtle amount, also the distance to a more subtle amount, plugging this into the normal of our glass shader, setting the right output again, and now you have water drops on your glass. I'm hiding the juice for now so you can see them better. Because when I go close up to the glass, you can see these little water speckles on your glass, which make the look a bit more realistic in my opinion. So that's about it. We made a glass of orange juice with the right shader setup. We added some ice cubes on top of it, which are procedural because with every copy you create, you get a different shape depending on where they are. And I showed you how to even put ice cubes inside a glass. So what do you think about this full shading setup, the ice cube methods I used and also the methods I used to display ice cubes inside the glass? Tell me your opinion or ask any questions you have. I'm always happy to read your comments or answer your questions. And if you like the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel and see you next time. Bye.